Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for another video from Dr. Kearney Cardiology. My name is Paul, and I'm joined here with Bethel. Today, we're going to be talking about spotting misinformation. So this video is uh, can be thought of as a shorter version of a previous webinar that we held called Understanding Scientific Research. If you are interested in learning more about this topic in depth, feel free to watch our other uh, video that's titled Understanding Scientific Research. But with that said, we'll begin uh investigating how we can spot misinformation so here we have a brief summary of things that we're going to cover today uh, and we also have a small little example of how we can spot misinformation as well so what exactly is misinformation misinformation is perhaps more colloquially known as fake news now when a lot of us hear fake news you know we might begin to think of president trump or the united states um, but with that being said Fake news and misinformation are things that have been around for years and years and years, um, you know, way back to the world wars in, in forms of propaganda and perhaps even before that as well. And it's the deliberate spread of inaccurate information. So we are all victims of fake news, regardless of where we live and the time period that we have lived in. And so today we are going to look at how we can uh, start to recognize fake news and misinformation and hopefully we can circumvent um, inaccurate information and the deliberate spread of that as well. So at some point every Canadian has fallen for fake news. This includes myself, Bethel, you, every Canadian, everyone in the world has probably fallen for fake news and 90% have admitted it to a CBC online poll. And keep in mind that's having admitted it. A lot of people don't like to admit uh, that they may be wrong sometimes. So it's, I think it's fairly safe to say that, you know, we've all come across this at some point. Now, there are a lot of types of misinformation. Um, you know, we can see misinformation shared on social media, in unreliable sources, even in Google searches when you're trying to find an answer for something. It also comes up in the form of clickbait, satire, and random people who may be claiming to know something that they really don't know. And we are gonna look at all of these in depth. On the left side, you can see social media, which can have lots of different types of fake news. Um, an example is Facebook or even WhatsApp, and these are apps where anyone can share, which means that not everything that's posted is going to be real. And then on the right side of the screen, you can see clickbait, which is a term to describe ads that are enticing in nature, and they will entice you to click on them. And these may seem outrageous. So once you click on them, you see a news article, and this news article is not always true or verified. So it's important to stay vigilant and make sure that just because an article looks enticing, you don't click on it and suddenly believe it. So on the next slide, um, you can see unreliable sources and satire. So unreliable sources, examples of these are just anyone's blog online. So the internet doesn't have like, um, checks and balances that make sure that everything that's posted is real anyone who wants to po can post things on their blog so it's important to make sure that if you see heather's blog for example you don't believe everything that's posted on it and then on the other hand there's satire which there's there's news sources that are comedic in nature and dedicated to satire so they post fake news but purposely and this can accidentally get some people out there and then um, you have google searches and random people so when you make a Google search, it's important to not always believe everything you see that pops up first. Um, often these new these informations that pop up at the top of the screen can be from Wikipedia or just sources that aren't verified. So you need to keep researching and keep digging. And then also you can have random people on the internet. Um, it could just be some random person behind the screen that's pretending to be a CEO or a doctor and they don't have the credentials to do so. So yeah. Also, when you are initially assessing a piece of information that you, verif that you find on the internet, there's three things that you need to do. Firstly, you need to check whether it's too extreme. If it's something that's predicting the end of the world or too good or too disastrous, it may be fake. Um, secondly, if it's completely new and you haven't seen any hint of it happen before in the world, you haven't seen it on the TV source that you, the TV channel that you typically look at, maybe you haven't seen it on CBC or CNN, then it may not be true. If you haven't heard from it from your friends or family, then it also may not be true. And then finally, make sure to stay suspicious. Make sure to not always believe that everything, everything you see on the internet. So the first step you should take when looking at an online article is making a quality assessment. So this means looking at spelling and grammar and also whether it's using informal language. 
So legitimate journals and publishing systems wouldn't allow spelling and grammar mistakes to get by their editing systems. And then also informal language probably wouldn't be used in a legitimate scientific article that has cases and that has facts behind it. So just make sure to stay on the lookout. So continuing on quality assessment, it is important to make sure that you are all the information you're finding on the internet, it can be verified by a doctor and legitimate online health resources. So firstly, consult your doctor. If you see an article that's related to um, your health or that you think could personally affect you, make sure to consult your doctor. And then also make sure that the online health resources that you're looking at are valid. So these often end in .gov when you search them up on the internet and they're posted by the Public Health Association either provincial or federal and other medical associations from universities like McMaster or John Hopkins. So make sure that everything that's being posted is done by someone who's accredited and qualified in order to ensure that these sources are reliable. And then time sensitivity. So the date of the publication um, is important and, the, and whether or not it's new information. So the date of the publication means if it's too old, then maybe the information that's being presented is outdated and has changed. So make sure that you're looking at the date that it's publish, pub, published. And then uh, new information. So the reason for this is that new information may have been discovered uh, since the time of the publication. So you need to make sure that if it's too old, then maybe new information has been published since then. So it makes old information irrelevant and outdated or even wrong. Right, and when we start talking about the quality of evidence presented, um, we have actually in, in the world of science, we have a hierarchy of evidence quality. And you'll notice at the very top here, we have randomized control trials. And this is often what you'll hear Dr. Kearney talk about when he cites evidence in the clinic. Um, randomized control trials and systematic reviews are considered high quality evidence. And that's a lot of what we provide you or the information that we forward to you in the clinic. Um, when we when we make judgments based off only what we have seen that's called observational data now observational data can provide us with a lot of important information but it doesn't tell us anything about causality or cause and effect it can tell us about trends and patterns that we are seeing so when we are making judgments it's important that we do look at high quality information and if you have more questions about this or you're, you're more interested in learning about the a uh, hierarchy of research evidence, you can follow up by watching our longer uh, webinar that's titled Understanding Scientific Research. Um, finally, we have to consider certain things when we are looking at um, information. We can often consult external sources. Perhaps one of the best external sources that we can consult is our doctors. Um, you know, doctors are really up to date with a lot of the science that they are teaching us. And they, you know, try their hardest, especially Dr. Kearney, tries their hardest to make sure that you are pro uh, provided with the highest quality care possible. There are some online sites that we can use uh, to our advantage, and we'll show some examples of these. And they basically guide us in this process of evaluating the reliability of a website. Finally, friends and family can, while, you know, like we mentioned earlier, they may provide sources of, of, sources of unreliable information, they can also be used to provide the sources of reliable information. If, you know, perhaps you have friends and family that may be educated in a certain field or understand a little bit about science, feel free to reach out to them and ask them um, a little bit more information about a certain topic. Now, there are some websites that we can use to that help us evaluate um, the reliability of sources. So there's trustortrash.org, uh, so trust it or trash it. It guides us through a one, uh, one by one stepwise fashion in, uh, in assessing the reliability of websites and it asks us questions um, whether we should or, or hints us about whether we should trust a website or not. A similar one is factcheck.org and in fact factcheck.org um, also has a lot of um, up-to-date and recent events information. So on the screen here you can see fact checking uh, President Trump's attack on the World Health Organization is one of the examples that they have on their screen right now. And truthorfiction.com is very similar in that it keeps up with, um, you know, recent news and fact checks that as well to, to make sure that people are getting 
uh, reliable information. So while trustortrash.org can be used for um, you know, any website and it guides you through it, the other two, so factcheck.org and truth or fiction will provide you with um, having done the fact check on certain news outlets already. Now we have a mnemonic that we can use in order to um, keep in our mind and remember our method of assessing reliability of websites and it's called Kapow. You know, it's almost like you're a superhero fighting fake news at this point. Um, so ask yourself, is the information current? How old is it? Is it outdated? Authorship, who wrote this piece of information? What gives them the authority and credibility to write it? You know, are they an MD, a doctor? Are they uh, qualified for this field? What's the purpose and the goal of the website? Are they trying to sell you something? Are there a lot of advertisements on the website? Are they providing you objective information? And here again, um, is the objective, is the website objective or opinionated? opinionated? Are they providing with a balance or only showing you one side of the argument? Um, and a good, a good rule of thumb for objective um, uh, sources of information is look for academic journals or look for, uh, like Bethel mentioned earlier, associations such as uh, McMaster University or public health. Finally, writing style. Is the writing style informal or formal? Do you see a lot of mistakes? And one thing that we do also want to emphasize is correlation does not imply causation. Now, what this means is that just because two things happen at the same time or two things seem to be related, it does not mean that one leads to the other. In order for us to know about causation or one thing leading to another, we need high quality randomized control trials. So let's look at some examples here. We can see here that the per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese is correlated with the civil engineering doctorates awarded. But we know that mozzarella cheese does not create civil engineers. You know, these two, these two things just increase at the same time. They're correlated, but not, uh, but there is no causal relationship there. One doesn't cause the other. We have another example here. People who drown after falling out of a fishing boat is correlated with the marriage rate in Kentucky. Drowning because falling out of a fishing boat shouldn't decrease the marriage rate in Kentucky. And, you know, here again, we have a correlation, but it doesn't necessarily cause, uh, cause any. And once more, the per capita consumption of cheese and the number of people who die by becoming tangled in their bedsheets. They're correlated, but cheese isn't going to cause your bedsheets to tangle you or, uh, to strangle you as well. So, you know, these are very bizarre examples, but it just goes to show that you can take any two pieces of information and anyone on the internet, you know, it could be anyone who has no uh, qualifications can try piecing them together and say that one thing it causes the other thing. Now, these are very easy examples. You know, these two things are unrelated whatsoever, but if we take things that might be related, they, it, they can be uh, very easy for us to fall for them. So some examples that are very prevalent right now, 5G towers do not cause COVID-19. They are just associated with COVID-19. Obviously, we're going to have 5G towers in areas where we have high population density, and we are going to have a lot of cases of COVID-19 in areas where we have high population density. But that doesn't mean that there's a causal relationship here. 5G towers can be like cheese, and COVID-19 can be like civil engineers. They happen at the same time, but they're not necessarily related to one another. Statins also do not cause soreness. They are associated with soreness. People take statins and people grow sore over time. A lot of the people who are growing sore due to age or due to arthritis or other, um, or other, uh, other conditions or anything else that's going on are also, also happen to be the people that are taking statins as well. So just because these two things happen at the same time doesn't necessarily mean that they're uh, related. Again, statins can be the cheese and soreness can be the civil engineers. And for us to prove a causation or, or a cause, we need very high quality research that's known as randomized control trials and not observational data. So if you remember back to our hierarchy of research evidence, right at the top we had randomized control trials. And it's actually very, very difficult for us to um, prove that one thing causes the other. So with that being said, we, in science, try our best to 
um, put our trust and faith in the high quality research. <clears throat> now we have one example that, uh, that we can actually show to you. And there's this one source that claims that statins cause dementia. Now you'll notice that there are a lot of issues with, uh, with this source. And here, I can show this to you uh, right now. So we can take a quick look at this uh, website, claims that statins cause dementia. Now, a few things, and we can walk through what we discussed earlier as well. So last updated, 2018. So sure, it looks pretty recent. It doesn't look like uh, it's out of date. Notice that this website, although it's not a, it doesn't seem to be a reliable website. It's not McMaster, it's not a research journal. It's just a random bebrainfit.com. So random website, you know, it, it doesn't really have any credibility to it. Let's take a look at the authors. So I've already uh, investigated these authors and it turns out that these authors are both chiropractors. Now, chiropractors are trying to teach us about statins and heart disease. That doesn't really add up. They're not MDs, they're not cardiologists, and this is out of their scope of practice. So we should already be skeptical about chiropractors telling us about statins. That could just as easily be a civil engineer telling us about surgery. You know, that's not their scope of practice. Now, you'll notice this is where a lot of people get tricked. This one website says balanced information and research. I have already gone through and read through this article, and I can tell you it is not balanced. It provides only one side, so it is opinionated, and it is not necessarily research-based. A lot of the citations, and if you notice here by citations, I mean they cite an article after they make a claim. A lot of these citations are actually just news outlets or other fake articles as well. So they're using fake information to try and teach us fake information. Now, obviously, I'm not going to have time to go through the entire um, entire article with you, but I do have pieces to share with you. Now, I've gone through this article, and I can say there's almost something wrong with uh, almost every line in this entire article. Um, but uh, there's a few that stand out. Another thing that we can notice is that there is a lot of advertisements. So, you know, this, this uh, page is just trying to make some money off of us as well by showing us ads. <clears throat> so let's see, there's this one claim here. Annual sales are expected soon to reach $1 trillion. I opened up this citation and it was actually another random website that had no credibility to it whatsoever. They're saying we're currently experiencing epidemics of memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's disease. And, it, and they tell us that statins are increasing in use as well. This may not be a coincidence, but you have to wonder what else is going on in the world? Do people not naturally get old? They're, they're taking two pieces of unrelated information and trying to burge them together and present it to us as in not being a coincidence. Now I could do the exact same thing. The annual consumption of mozzarella cheese has increased and the amount of civil engineer doctorates have increased. That means this must not be a coincidence. And you can see the flaw there, right? So you can scroll down, we see a lot more ads, a lot more ads uh, trying to make some more money from us. Uh, without adequate cholesterol, your brain cells would die. So this isn't medically sound, it's not scientifically sound. One, they have no citation. Two, they're forgetting the fact that cells can produce their own cholesterol as well. And you know, you as an average reader might not know that, but us as having studied this do know this. And you can see that they're already trying to trick us with some of the holes or knowledge gaps that might be there as well. Even your doctor may not know that high total cholesterol actually reduces the risk of, um, of dementia in the elderly. So this claims causation from an observation. If you remember, we need high quality controlled trials to tell us about causation. This is trying to look at an observation and say, this is what caused it. There is no doubt that cholesterol lowering uh, statin drugs are linked to serious memory loss, fuzzy thinking, learning difficulties. Now, it cites clearly outdated piece, and the citation is also a news article. Um, oh, sorry, it's not even, yeah, it's a news piece and it's not even a study, so it's almost non-existent evidence, and it's trying to take fake evidence and convince us with that once more, if we were to click that number six. We have another one here. Some people get irritable, depressed, and anxious when taking the drugs or on a low-fat diet, and once more, cites unreliable sources, and tells us that 
uh, civil engineering is caused by cheese once more. Um, statins can lead to diabetes at an alarming rate. So there's no citation and they present it in such a serious way, an alarming rate. So statins are associated with increased diabetes to a very small extent, not that alarming rate that they're presenting and also no citation there as well. Now, nearly half of women who take these medications develop diabetes. All right, but we have to ask how many people would develop diabetes anyways. We also know that heart disease and diabetes are related. So a lot of the people who have heart disease are taking these medications and also end up with diabetes. Or so a lot of the people who have diabetes will need these medications because, you know, they're at higher risk for heart disease. So this is a common population. And so the fact that it's a common population means that we can't blame it on statins. Now, there's a lot more ads, a lot more problems. Um, you know, of the people who are hospitalized, only 25% of them have high cholesterol. The other 75% don't. So I actually read through number 14, the article that they cited here, and they actually misinterpreted what the article said. The article said that guidelines are thus not effective and we need to lower the guidelines. So the article wasn't saying that cholesterol is important. The article was saying cholesterol is important and we need to get everyone on lower cholesterol because right now everyone still has too high cholesterol and it's considered normal. Um, so it turns out that there's no correlation between fat and heart disease, no citation once more. So are they really telling us the truth or did they make that up? Um, now it tries to cite this here where increasing fat intake uh, to 50% improves nutritional status. I looked at, I pressed number 17 here and what it actually presents us is a very poorly done study with like 10 people in it. We can't study only 10 people and apply that to billions, right? 10 people don't tell us about billions of people. Um, high fat diets normalize uh, LDL. Now, so what they're saying here is actually contrary to the vast, huge majority of evidence out there. Um, so they're choosing two articles that say the opposite. Now, one thing that I do like to say is that you will always, always, always be able to find an article online that supports your belief, no matter what it is. I, you know, what we were saying from before, where cheese leads to civil engineers, I guarantee you, I could find something online that supports that. Of course, it's bizarre, but just because it's on the internet and just because you can cite it doesn't mean that it's true. And here they have a graph saying that higher cholesterol is actually better. They say it's from the World Health Organization, but when you click the link that they cite, it's actually a YouTube video. So that's, you know, last time I checked the World Health Organization is in a YouTube video. Um, there's a lot more wrong with this, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna speed through this. Um, so they, they try flipping the words of the study that they're citing again, even though, you know, they say that even though their cholesterol levels didn't budge, the article itself that they cite says that cholesterol is a known risk factor. Now here they try flipping Harvard's words on them. And they try saying that Harvard University has shown that low-fat diets are no better. Now, this is incorrect. They're, the Harvard uh, paper that they're citing actually says it's comparing low-fat processed food to high-fat processed food. We all know that processed food is bad for us. And, uh, you know, we still need to avoid processed food is what the Harvard study was saying. Um, but they tried flipping it on its head and presenting us with fake information. Now, this is a graph that might get a lot of us. Um, it looks like low fat guidelines go up and more people start getting obese. But we have to ask ourselves, what else happens in the 1970s? And hint, uh, I searched it up and I did some research and the, the food supply actually increased dramatically starting in the 1970s. People have more food, people are gonna get fatter, of course. So I you know there's just so much wrong with this article and we could keep going all day, um, but I'm gonna save us some time. Um, let's just see what other ones they have. So again, they're saying at the end of the day, the conclusion is that statins are a waste of healthcare resources and they're horrible and no one should take them. And that is against what the top of the line, high quality research with hundreds of thousands of participants um, say as well. So, you know, this is a very prime example of something that might perhaps look legitimate at first glance. Um, but then when you really start diving into it using the tools that we, uh, we learned together, in the past uh, few minutes, you can really see that there's a lot of things wrong with this article. It's very easy for anyone to fall for it. 
Now, if you fell for the article, I wouldn't blame you. I would blame the authors of that, um, of that paper because they know that they're spreading misinformation. And by the same logic, you know, if we, if we use the same logic that the authors of that art article used, I can tell you that the number of beds occupied by patients is correlated with the number of deaths. So this must mean that beds kill people. And you can see the flaw there. There's a flaw in that logic. Beds don't kill people. Of course, it makes sense that they're occupied by patients. And of course, it's correlated with deaths, but that doesn't tell us about causation. And so you can see at the end of the day, um, it's very easy for us to fall for a lot of the misinformation that's out there. It's really important for us to stay vigilant, use the methods provided in the past few minutes that we discussed to spot fake news and misinformation, and always be skeptical of what you read online or what you hear from others or what you see on social media. And the titles, a lot of the time, we'll see a title and not even read into the article. So it's really important for us to do our reading and make sure that we are vigilant with our reading. Thank you for watching. If you would like uh, more in-depth um, understanding on scientific research and a more in-depth tutorial on how to, you know, make sure that we are the best informed that we can be and uh, the most vigilant that we can be, feel free to watch our other webinar that's also posted on our YouTube channel titled Understanding Scientific Research. In that webinar, we go really in depth on how we can uh, make sure that we are getting the best information available for us. Again, thank you for joining us and hope to catch you in another video.